In Sri Lanka, Buddhist monks were greatly involved in mobilizing opinion for military action against the mostly Hindu Tamil minorities. The Sri Lankan army, it's a fact, resorted to gravely unethical and brutal tactics in their war against the Tamil Tigers. And such an unadulterated fury came from so-called religious motivation. What we see in Myanmar and Thailand, there is also religious dimension of conflicts between them. Now indeed, when the fanatical imams and the monks with guns express their emotion of anger and violence, only God can save the resultant situations. Now all these facts indicate what Dr. Ghosh also pointed out. There cannot be world peace without peace among religions. And there cannot be peace among religions without global dialogue between them. And there cannot be fruitful dialogue between religions without an accurate knowledge of one another and sense of mutual respect and acceptance as envisaged by Swami Vivekananda. Ebarashun. দেখা যাক এই লক্ষ্য পূরণে আমরা কতদূর কোন পথে কিভাবে এগিয়েছি সো ফার দা ওয়ার্ল্ড হ্যাজ সিন টু ডিফারেন্ট অ্যাটিটিউডস নাম্বার ওয়ান ইজ এক্সক্লুসিভিস্টিক অ্যাটিটিউড অ্যান্ড অ্যানাদার ওয়ান ইজ ডায়লগিক্যাল অ্যাটিটিউড দোস হু হেল দ্য ফ্রেস্ট ভিউ অ্যাজ ডক্টর ঘোষ অলসো পয়েন্ট আউট ক্লেম দ্যাট দিয়ার রিলিজিয়ন ইজ দ্য অনলি রিলিজিয়ন extra ecclesiam nalla salus no salvation no grace for others some would go even to that extent of calling others religions devils and satan tricks fortunately in this century there are no civilized and cultured groups and individuals who would openly stand up and support this view and the dialogical attitude is based upon the principle that each religion has certain elements of truth that are acceptable to all. And this concept became popular, greatly popular, after the Chicago Parliament of Religions, they saw the emergence of Swami Vivekananda, the prophet of religious harmony. And as a befitting tribute to the prophet of religious harmony, the first week of February, has been observed as the World Interfaith Harmony Week. Though, of course, the month of September, for obvious reasons, sees maximum number of interfaith meets held all over the world. Interfaith meeting, I heard it from Swami Tyagananda-ji, Minister in Church of Vedanta Society, Boston. He was invited to an interfaith meet in MIT, Boston. As he was going to the venue, he suddenly had a look at a poster put up just outside the interfaith chapel. The poster had four circles, and each circle represented one particular religious tradition. And below each circle was one line definition of that religion. And the first circle had so many several arrows. Each arrow stood for a god. The several arrows pointing to the line sketch of a human figure. And below the caption was Hinduism. And the definition, Hindus believe in and worship many gods. That's all. Now this is an uncharitable remark on the unaltered religion of the world. Hinduism, one would say, is a full-spectrum religion, starting from the image worship to the most abstract bhava. Anyway, the second circle had one arrow pointing to a human figure. Below the caption was Islam, and one line definition, Muslims worship one god. And the third circle was crossed out, the caption below Hinduism, uh, sorry, Buddhism, and the one-line definition, Buddhists worship no God. 
another fourth circle, since the poster was put up by an evangelical Christian group, it was a very bigger circle and was a golden arrow pointing to the most beautiful face and with the caption was Christianity and three four line definition, Christians worship God who is all love, all compassionate, all merciful, all helpful, etc, etc, etc. That's good, very good. But problems arise when you take upon yourself to define my religion. And you have to be extra careful not to hurt other sentiment. And that is to be done. In fact, after some time, when Swami Tyagarandaji had been to a particular inter-religious dialogue, and that particular chaplain who was instrumental in putting up that particular poster was also present. Then Swami Tyagarandaji, he referred to the poster and talked about the certain aspects of Hinduism. At the end of the seminar, the chaplain came to him and apologized to him and the poster was removed. Mr. Chairman, sir, this I say also to point out that the benefit of global dialogue is there. But when I say this, please allow me to refer to another relevant issue. Ami, Amare, Ottonto, Pujunio, Sikhoke, Kashika Professional Islam. Porvoti Kale, Tini Norendrapur, Ramkrishna, Mishane, Tin Doshate, Othoko, Chodurto, Astroma Thoko, even Bortomani Institute of Culture, Othoko. Tini at Pariki Kothabu children. The Daku, Amrajara Shubhago Kromi. Ramkrishna Vivekananda Udar Bhaktharai Eshe Pohnche Chhi Aamadhe Ekti Bapalikin Kho Vishesh Svachetan Thakte Habe Aamadhe Aamadhe Sri Ramkrishna Ke Aarkhat Na Kuri Sri Ramkrishna Ke Aarkhat Na Kuri Dato Sri Ramkrishna Nana Mathe Shathana Kore Chhen Shabpat Ke Shamman Janiya Chhen Ebon Aavashe Chhe Aadhani Jiwe Upohar Diya Chhen Annatama Mahabakro Jato Ma Tato Pa अभी रामकृष्ण विवेकानंद भावानुरागी अथवा जो जीशु कृष्ण अथवा हजरत मोहम्मद अथवा श्रीकृष्ण ने निंदा कर बोला निंदा उपभोग कर बो शेरा किंतु होया ना आम जो भी जाता है तो रामकृष्ण विवेकानंद उन्नरागी होए ताहले अभी जीशु कृष्ण हजरत मोहम्मद काके निंदा करते पार होना कारण श्री � so when I first heard it as a young boy with a UP Brahmin family background, I was greatly surprised and deeply moved. So much Catholicity, so much Udarata. And in keeping with this Catholic spirit and the holy traditions of Ramakrishna order, the branch centers of the Belurmat worship Jesus and other prophets because they consider that there is one saviour who has been plunged into the ocean of life, rises in one place and is known as Krishna, and then diving down again rises in another place and is known as Christ, Jarathustra, Hajrat Mahamad. And we at Ramakrishna Mission celebrate Christmas Eve also pointed out by Dr. Ghosh and Eve. But unfortunately, this Catholicity, Udharata, is not reciprocated by certain other religious groups. Mr. Chairman, sir, I'm sorry uh, if I say what I really hesitate to tell. There are double talks among leaders of various religions. They say something in public, but say something different to their own groups. They say something very conciliatory in the religious dialogue meets, but say something different to their own groups. And there are many educated Muslims I know who will speak in private what they won't speak in public. Of course, there are a sizable number of Hindus who also are not known for charitable remark on Islam. Maybe, probably because they cannot forget the way the Muslim invaders 
persecuted their forefathers or desecrated their places of religious or worship, whatever it may be, it might be deep rooted religious prejudice also. But what is most shocking is there are still some so called religious people who say, We are all right, you are all wrong. And some would say, Kill those who do not believe. Now, these absurdities could be a strong rallying point for lunatics and religious fanatics and terrorists, but a clear insult to the Son of God and to the noble prophet and a curse to humanity. And here comes Swami Vivekananda, the need of the hour, with his unique message of the divinity and of universal religion. How does he come? In one of his class lectures in America, Swami Vivekananda said, I quote, Buddha prophesied, I will come again in 500 years. Jesus Christ came in 500 years. Hajrat Muhammad came 500 years after. Martin Luther came 500 years after. But what Swami Vivekananda did not say was that 500 years after, came a monk from India with his wonderful message of universal acceptance and of divinity of the human nature and of world. And his words were so refreshing to the educated Americans. We believe not only in universal toleration, but we accept all religions as true. This was something revolutionary. At that time, followers of different religions were not prepared, rather reluctant to tolerate other religions. Acceptance of other religions was never heard of. They were never thought of. But only a prophet could do what Swami Vivekananda did. With the power of the prophet, he said, E divinity is on earth. I have a message to the West, as Buddha had a message to the East. And he said, I will not give it in a different manner, or a traditional manner. I will not Hinduize my message. I will not Christianize my message. I will not make it any eyes in the world, but I will Mayaize this message. This Mayaize, Mr. Chairman, sir, I feel is liberty. Liberty is my religion. And the freedom loving Americans, immediately accepted it. They already got political freedom and also economic freedom. And they were prepared for freedom from religious torture. And it also means freedom of religion from fanaticism and suffocating narrow-mindedness. Swami Vivekananda definitely challenged the conventional notion of religious authority, but never did he downgrade any religion. Rather, he broadened and deepened it. He was deeply inspired by the spirit of brotherhood and equality, followed by the adherence of Islam. And he wished that the theories of Vedanta should be wedded to practical Islam. Vedanta brain and Islam body. Another example, Holy Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself. But why should I love my neighbor as myself? The Vedanta doctrine of Hinduism answers, I must love my neighbor as myself because I and my neighbor are one in the Supreme Self. Eko ham bahushyam tat srishtva tadeva anupravishad. And in fact, Swami Vivekananda has thus given us a clear-cut outline of the nature and scope of the global dialogue between religions. And based on this, I have a couple of humble suggestions to place before you, Mr. Chairman, sir. The first one is, the aim of the global dialogue should be Ano Bhadra Kratabo Yantu Vishwataha let noble thoughts come to us from every side. And secondly, the ideal of Ekansat Vipra Bahudha Vadanti. Truth is one, sages describe it in various ways. 
this ideal has to be discussed and has to be accepted ultimately by all of us. And third important issue to me is this. Out of every six persons in the world, one is Muslim and two are Christians. So the priority should be on the dialogue between Christians and Muslims. Islam and Christianity. It's funny that they have so much common between themselves and still their history has been a history of constant fight between the two ever since 7th century. Mr. Chairman sir, real danger comes when non-essentials swallow the essentials of religion. And I would say a beautiful religion of peace, power, prosperity and brotherhood that Islam is, is in real danger. It needs to be rescued from the hands of religious fanatics, lunatics and terrorists who have hijacked it and claim to be its custodian. Definitely I won't go farther with my proposals anymore because I do believe that my time is about to be up and the five minutes are there coming to our Mr. Chairman sir. Uh, and lunch is also awaiting all of us. Before I conclude, I'd also recall the topic once more. Global dialogue between religions, as Swami Vivekananda would have envisaged it. The second part of the sentence, as Swami Vivekananda would have envisaged, the verb has been used in the subjunctive. And subjunctive, as a student of grammar knows, Certainly, present certainly uncertainty. So, could there be uncertainty, or there could be uncertainty about the positive results of global dialogue, or there was an element of certain uncertainty whether Swami Vivekananda had great faith in the global dialogue. But certainty is there. Religion is not a product of intellectual gymnastics. Religion is a process of being and becoming. And what stands in the way of being and becoming is our impure mind. Our mind is so vast, so powerful, so full of potential. But all this wasted on some small details, emotions and sensations. Mr. Chairman, sir, it is not important whether I am a Muslim or a Christian or a Hindu. Important is whether I am a good Hindu, good Muslim, good Christian, with a spiritual bent of mind. I can talk of religious harmony when I just practice three types of harmony. Number one, harmony within me. Number two, harmony with others. And number three, harmony with God. And when I say this, I cannot but remember Swami Raghunath Andaji, who would often say, are you growing spiritually? Can you love others? Have you peace within? Do you radiate it around you? And this is called spiritual progress. He was also fond of saying, what is spirituality? Spirituality is closing your eyes in meditation and you find peace within. And when you open your eyes, you see people around you and say, what can I do for you? And when sufficient number of people do so, we cannot change the world, but we can change ourselves. So when Hindus, Muslims, Christians, at least adequate number of people, those present here, if we do so, definitely what Swami Vivekananda envisaged will certainly be the reality, and this beautiful planet of ours will be a much better place to live in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mishra, for this very practical <coughs> presentation of the way we must look at interreligious dialogue. Uh, the <coughs> reference to lunch being there waiting for us. Yes, yes. I think we have still two things to take care of. One is 
to note any very pressing question, any very pressing question that this audience has. We will take note of the questions. And if time permits, there would be answers. Otherwise, it will be taken up in the next session. Uh, I invite some very pressing questions from the audience, if there are any. And uh, the other thing that needs to be taken care of is some words from the chairperson. Otherwise, I would not be able to earn my lunch. <laughs>